that's a slippery thing, I think, um, the awareness of a reader or not. Um, I was asked this question recently, and uh, in a format in which um, another writer had answered the, had, had done the very same questionnaire. It was this, um, the wonderful writer Lydia Davis, who's also an amazing translator um, and somebody I admire a lot. And so perhaps it's cheating, but I will invoke her answer to the question, which was, um, that there's a sense of companionship as she's writing, but she's not sure who the companion is. And um, it just resonated so deeply with me. I think I feel the same way. And um, it's really, it's a great thing because there isn't the sense that I need to impress anyone. So um, I don't think of a specific reader per se. And yet, there is a performative quality to writing in that I want to please someone, but that someone is not regarding me with the judgments that I think of when I want to impress regular people in the world. So it isn't the normal kind of insecure human thing where you want people to think you're smart and to like you. Um, it's something very different. It's almost as if it will sound quasi-religious, but it's almost as if for a brief moment there's a more pristine witness to your life than you experience um, in your daily interactions with other people. All of that said, I do think that for the writer, at least for me, um, the reader ultimately is me, and I write the kind of thing that I would be pleased by. Um, it, just, it just has to be the case because the the – the logical cycle of generating writing and doing a great deal of reading and thinking about what literature is and what pleasure is and then accessing pleasure as you write, which is such a fundamental component to writing. When the writing is pleasurable is when it's good, ultimately. And that's I've just found that um, to, just cognitively that's been the case in my own writing. So to me, you know, that implies with great evidence that the reader fundamentally is me. The more you read in your daily life, the more you're able to read and yet retain your own sense of not just voice, but what kind of story you want to tell. Um, I've heard people say that they're afraid to read too much because they don't want to be influenced, but I actually find the opposite to be the case. The more I read, the more I feel um, sharpened, in a sense, to what it is I admire and how it is I may operate or think in contrast to what it is I'm reading. So I find a real clarity sometimes in immersing myself in other people's prose. Um, that said, I pick through very conscientiously, as I'm sure all writers do. Um, it really comes down to what's going to help your cause. And everything should help your cause. And it isn't just reading, but um, the movies that you see and the conversations that you choose to have with people and the places that you go and don't go. And so I find that you have to really curate your life, or at least I do. It's not so much a matter of must, but it's that's that's where my pleasures, um, that, you know, that's how they derive, what they derive from is keeping everything really meticulously chosen so that I can keep thinking and mulling and building upon um, whatever fictional world I'm working on. And reading is a huge part of that. I mean, that said, I don't read right when I get up in the morning. I like to write a few paragraphs first, but certainly later in the day, every day.